Chase Lee Hockey with the Blue Futon, and out of the theater, I finally saw Fantastic Beasts and the Secrets of Dumbledore. The Secret of Dumbledore. Anyway, someone has secrets. It is Dumbledore. Are we going to find them out? Roll that in. I'm going to say this for every single Fantastic Beast movie. I have not seen all of the Harry Potter films. Period. I know all this film. I haven't seen it. Party foul on me. Absolutely so. I'm going this into a clean slate of actually seeing Fantastic Beasts maybe first. I'll probably see the Harry Potter sooner or later. Because who knows if they're going to make a 4 and 5 Fantastic Beasts. So anyway, what is this movie about? It's a very continuation of the second one. Same characters. Very, very few new characters. But we're going to the realm of who is going to be in charge of this wizarding world. Is it going to be Grodenwald? Is it going to be a Dumbledore? Or is it going to be someone else in these different factions? Who are we getting involved? Who's coming back from the bad side? Who's barely in this movie? Let's find out. So did I like this movie? I thought it was an okay movie. This really didn't do anything for me. Unlike Crimes of Grindelwald in the first one. For some reason, the Crimes of Grindelwald, yeah, there's a lot of story building. But I, it was more fast-paced, entertaining. And I was like, ooh, what's going on? What's going on? It was very much more action. This one was a lot more story about Dumbledore, Jude Law. Tina, the person Eddie Redman loves in the movie, she's in this movie for maybe three minutes at all. So don't expect her story arc to be in this movie at all. Uh, Dan Fogel, still love his character as a whole. I do enjoy what they're doing with Credence and what's happening with Dumbledore and what the secrets are. What are the secrets of Dumbledore? He's gay. Uh, Credence really isn't the Dumbledore he thought. What I, I don't know any other secrets, though. Uh, so I am curious what the Chinese cut is. I guess the Chinese cut takes out a couple scenes of dialogue here and there about love and the tea scene and everything like that. So I'm curious. I mean, did Warner Brothers really need to make a Chinese cut for this movie? I mean, Hollywood wants to say don't say gay about Florida, right? But China? Oh, oh. We need your money. We need your money. Well, fuck off, hypocrites and double standards. Fucking hate that shit. 100%. But anyway, looking at this movie, let's look at the negatives of the movie. I do not like what they did with Johnny Depp. Matt Mickelson have nothing wrong with the actor, but they need to explain in this movie what happened because the first movie, it was Colin Farrell to Johnny Depp. Second movie, it was Johnny Depp. Third movie, Matt Mickelson. Why? They could have done another like kind of transition of Johnny Depp to Mads Mikkelsen kind of thing. Saying, like, oh, he has his real face now. He keeps having to change his face. Which I think would, at this point, you should change the face every single movie. To make it more of like, he's just a nasty guy that wants to change his face and everything like that. So I think if they continue doing 4 and 5, that's what they need to do. The Credence storyline I find very interesting. Because I don't know where they're going to go with it from here on out. They made the third movie almost like they don't know if there's going to be a fourth and fifth movie. How it ended with different story arcs of like Credence, of you know Dan Fogel's character, what he's doing with his love life, Eddie Redman, and everything like that. So you're like, did they do this on purpose? Because it kind of could end, let's put it that way, it kind of could end. And they're like, okay, we're done. And I can see as a final conclusion because how the end shot is, you're like, yeah, I can completely see it. But I think this movie is okay. There are some good gags. There are some good elements to this movie about the tone. Some of the tone does change pretty drastically, especially when they're in these like spider scorpion rooms and trying to save people here and there. Uh, the whole point of this movie, let's put it as a whole, is playing that whole marble game where you have a marble underneath a shell and you're moving the marble because now Maz Mikkelsen uh, Grunewald's character can see the future and do everything like that. So this whole movie is having these five characters go to five different parts of the world and kind of confusing this clan of Grunewald followers. Of course, the German clan is always a bad clan. Holy cow, are there going to be Nazis in 4 and 5? Who knows? The Nazis of the wizarding world. So overall, Fantastic Beasts, I thought it was an okay movie. It... It was a movie. I thought it was a little bit too long. Didn't need to be two hours and twenty-two minutes, or they should have done different with the pacing because there's sometimes some little dialogue scenes where I'm like, "Where are we going? Where are we going?" Two more nitpicks. 
Not a lot of action in this movie. A lot more talking. Yeah, there's a couple action scenes here and there, but nothing like overly, you know, like crazy. And number two, as a person who does not know a lot about Harry Potter, are you supposed to say a spell? Like, Kabadu, Curioso, where? Here, they just like point wands and they do stuff. Like, pew, 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 pew. I thought you were supposed to say something. Is it, is it mental saying? I thought you were like, Abracadabra, and then the magic happens, not just. Pew, 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 pew. So, I don't know. Maybe I just don't know that as well. And I won't say, I mean, I probably will get, I mean, if I ever go back to Universal Studios, I mean, I could get Dan Fogel's wand. I mean, that would be a kind of cool wand to get. It's probably a hot seller. I do have a wand somewhere in this house for spending like 200 bucks at the Universal Store and getting a free wand. Do I know where it's at? I probably should have brought it out for this review. I'm not a good person. Anyway, let's give this review. Fantastic Beasts 3. Overall, it was a good movie. I enjoyed it for what it was, but I was kind of underwhelmed with what they did with some of the characters and where they're going with it because I'm just like, What's next? That's the biggest fault, I think. Is I don't know what they're going to do next. So, Fantastic Beasts 3 will receive a 3 out of 5 of food tons, which equals at 60%. So, you see the Critics' News scores gave this one. The critics, a 47%. Oh, shit. With 204 of them, audience score an 84% with 250,000. Here's quick consensus. Fantastic Beasts, The Secret of Dumbledore, avoids some of the pitfalls that plagued its predecessor, but lacks much... Of the magic it, that drew audiences into the Wizarding World May many movies ago. I have to agree. Like I said, there's not a lot of magic in this movie. It's more dialogue and these fantastic beasts. We got to pick. Are we going to focus more on the beasts or the magic? Here, they didn't really focus on either one. But I still enjoyed the movie. I had fun with it. It was a good... It was alright. I guess you could put it that way. Like I said, but I'm not a Harry Potter nutcase. That probably sounds awful. I'm sorry. Anyway, 60%, 47.84. Chase Doctor for Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of Futon Topia. You Blue Tonians, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And do you think there's going to be a fourth one? Is Ezra Miller going to be in it? Should they switch Maz Mickelson and do like a different actor every three times? And the contact was very different with Johnny Depp and Maz Mickelson. That, that, it was. White contact. <laughs>